Gather round, children, as Papa Crash tells you the tale about the time he saved the 2023 TF2 Summer Update. During the lead up to the summer update, I helped figure out the most hilariously ridiculous source engine jank I've ever seen in my life, which was preventing a map from compiling, and seemed to be causing the update itself to be held up. The process of which I thought would make a great case study in narrowing down your own obscure source engine issues, as well as an amusing behind the scenes look at what things can look like from a mapper's perspective who are involved in the update. But Crash, you might be asking, you didn't get a map in this update this time around. How did you save Christmas? I mean the summer update. Don't worry, we'll get there. Before we get into the thick of the shenanigans, you need to understand the basics of how Valve implements community maps in the game. I'm planning on doing a deeper dive into this in a future video, but here's the basic idea. If you're lucky enough to have Valve select your map for an update in the game, you will get the coveted direct email from a Valve employee, more often than not than the king of TF2 himself, Eric Smith. This email will tell you that your map has been chosen for the next update, and if you agree to having it featured, and which, why wouldn't you, the steps you need to take to get them what they need. An important note for this story is that Valve needs to be able to compile your map on their end, so your active workshop submission that everyone voted on is not enough for them to move forward. What they need is your uncompiled VMF, the file that Hammer can read and edit, and all assets or other files needed to fully compile and publish the map. To do so, Valve has you upload these files through the workshop as a hidden item submission which they then use to have you securely pass the files over. This also means that mappers selected for the update and all of those who contributed to it find out often weeks ahead of an update that their project has been selected, giving them time to get everything sorted and sent over to Valve. More often than not, Valve is looking to get these files as soon as possible to give room for any potential delays in the process. Occasionally, there could be some snags in compiling, whether it was caused by a mistake on your end before submitting or some other issue, and Valve will need more info from you or an update to your project to get it working on their end. Maps are complicated. During this time period for me, being so personally connected to the mapping scene, I'll often hear word of the emails going out and possibly from some of the people involved in the projects looking for guidance on it or just wanting to share their excitement with someone who know they won't leak their inclusions. My first map included in the game Probed was leaked ahead of time and it was miserable to have that spoiled for me, so I know better than to do that to somebody else. So that brings us to the map in question, Hardwood. Heh. Hardwood, heh, is a 3CP attack defend map created primarily by Squishy. Unfortunately, despite the map compiling perfectly fine on their end, when compiled by Valve, the map appeared to have almost all of the lighting completely sucked out of the map. There's a few things that could cause this, but the fact that it wasn't a universal issue for everyone trying to compile it made things a little bit more complicated. Luckily, in the crunch to figure out the problem, a theoretical lead was found. After a number of different mappers tried to compile it, one potential constant was found. It seemed that anyone using an Intel CPU compiling the map would get the blacked out issue, where those compiling on AMD processors wouldn't. It was a weird coincidence with a very small sample size, but since I personally use an Intel CPU in my computer, I offered to give it a try compiling to see if I could replicate the issue on my end. Lo and behold, after an hour long full bells and whistles compile of the map using CompilePal, with a handful of errors that could possibly be a lead, there it was. The blackened void of a map staring at me, the bane of Valve and the very summer update itself. As someone fascinated with these kinds of issues, I decided to take it upon myself to see if I could narrow down the cause. The most notable thing I noticed in the compile log was the error no draw on a displacement surface. I've seen this error cause problems before in a map, but I hadn't known it to be hardware specific. I was told this was an error that had been consistent through the development of the map and hadn't caused problems, but I figured I'd dig around for it anyway. No draw is a material used to designate a face that shouldn't render in the game, and when applied to a displacement surface, often used for terrain, it can cause this error and sometimes weird issues can pop up. I saved a copy of the map so I would have a working base version and another to break apart as needed without worrying about messing anything up permanently on my end. To narrow things down in Hammer to only what could be causing the problem, first I turned off all viz groups, leaving only the displacements selected. Doing a quick fly around the map, nothing immediately stood out for me. No draw is a bright yellow material in the editor, so you can often spot it from further away, but no luck. That would be way too easy. Luckily, I had a lesser known tool in my arsenal utilizing the Replace Textures feature. What I did was told it to find every instance of no draw on the map and selected Do Not Replace Texture, Mark Found Solids. What this did was make the problem face highlighted on the map, and with a quick glance around, I spotted it. This tiny sliver of an edge of a roof that was accidentally made was our culprit. I destroyed this displacement and attempted the one hour full compile again. And the error went away in the compile log. But unfortunately the lighting issue still persisted. <sighs> Not to be defeated, I ventured forward, now utterly obsessed with finding the solution to this problem. I realized after a lot of time wasted compiling that this issue wasn't going to be quickly solved, so I needed to come up with a way to replicate the issue without doing a full long compile. So I limited my compile to normal BSP, fast viz, and normal lighting. This only took about a minute and a half, and hey look, the lighting's broken. Probably should have did this from the start and saved myself a lot of time, but I foolishly assumed the full compile was necessary to replicate it. I dug deep into the compile log to see if I could notice anything that stood out as broken and give us a lead on the issue. I noticed during the gather light bounce lighting stage of the compile, it would show added RGB, nan nan nan, where normally there would be RGB values. 
Nan could be not a number, none, or even less likely referring to your grandmother or a delicious flatbread. It seemed like this could be the telltale sign of our problem, and after a few tests loading up the map, I confirmed that this was our issue. This meant that I no longer had to load the map in game and look to see if it worked or not. I could just stop the compile as soon as this stage hit and know our problem persisted. So moving forward, there's another sort of if all else fails technique you can use to narrow down problems in a map utilizing the cordon tool. The cordon tool causes only the area inside of the boundaries of it to compile and seals outside of it, like putting a big empty box in your map that calls everything not inside of it. You can, for example, use this to save yourself time compiling portions of a map to see changes. What this method is, however, is sort of the brute force way of finding a problem in your map. It takes a lot of compiles to narrow down this way, so the work we did up to this point shortening the time it takes to see if the map still has the error is going to speed up this process a ton. First, I made a cordon box around the entire map, skybox included, making sure to adjust it vertically to envelop everything, and compiled. This was sort of my control experiment. The NAN error was there, so I knew the cordon method could be used. Next, I cut the skybox out and compiled. NAN error. So now we know the problem is in the main map, and it's not a skybox issue at least. Next, I cut the map in half, starting with roughly the bottom half, looking from the top-down view. And surprise, the NAN error was gone. This told me that the issue had to be somewhere in the other half of the map, and also that it's not a widespread issue all over, but potentially a small issue somewhere in just that other half. So I dragged my cordon selection to the other half of the map, making sure to select everything other than what I had selected before. A larger grid size really helped with this. I compiled, and there it is again, our NAN error. From there I repeated this process, cutting my selection in half, compiling, seeing the results, adjusting from there, until I had a small region of the map left where I knew the problem was, but a much smaller area to dig through. At this point, I had a theory I wanted to dive into. I know sometimes a light entity inside of a world brush can suck all the light out of the map in a similar way to the problem that we're having, so I wanted to look around the leftover map and see if I could find anything like this. I couldn't just turn off all the lights and compile, because then there wouldn't be any lights to bounce and show the error in the first place, so I went the other way around, turning off all viz groups and switching the lights back on so I could see how many were left, which was luckily not that many at this point due to our cordon usage. I went through each one one by one, switching back and forth between lights only and the rest of the map visible, but I couldn't find any that could be causing problems. I even experimented with deleting a few of these, but the issue was still there. So I decided to take another route. I turned only the viz groups on that I absolutely needed to run the map and have lighting. This means selecting world geometry and lights and manually turning off water displacements and all tool brushes. On compile, no NAN error. So we know it's one of the groups that we turned off and we could start turning them back on one by one to see which causes the air to pop back up. Again, you see how this is an incredibly tedious process? I started with the big one and turned all tool brushes back on. Those can kind of do some weird things you wouldn't expect, so I wanted to get it out of the way first. Compiled and no error. I wanted to get props out of the way next. I figured it was unlikely as this felt more of like a brushwork slash lighting interaction to me, but it was another big one to get out of the way. As expected, no error. I could have batched this together probably with some other viz groups, but I didn't want to introduce too many variables at the same time. I figured Funk Detail was the next big one to test as it behaves in world brushes in ways, so I tried that one. And NAN error. Ooh, interesting. To double check, I turned all the viz groups back on and turned off Funk Details, compiled, and no error. To triple check our findings, I turned off the cordon and compiled with Funk Details off, and again, no error. So I knew for sure at that point that it was a Funk Detail causing the problem and it was only in that small cordoned area. So the only thing to do next was to turn our cordon back on, turn everything but Funk Details off, and see what we were working with. Luckily with the cordon, we only had a small pile of funk detailed brushes left that it could even be. So going back to the usual trial and error methods, I deleted a funk detail group, compiled, and looked for the error. I started with some of the larger ones to narrow it down quicker, but again I didn't want to eliminate too much at a time so there wasn't too many variables being tested at once. I mean, at this point, what's a dozen or so more compiles? Chunk of funk detail, compiled, nan error. Over and over until I grabbed this chunk of wooden wall, deleted it, compiled, and no nan error. Gasp, I proclaimed, now nearly four hours into my obsessive dive into obscure Source Engine spaghetti. I undid the removal and brought the offending detail brush back into the map. This was a group of a handful of brushes grouped together in one funk detail entity, so I switched into solids mode and I grabbed one brush out of it at a time, deleted it, and compiled again, eliminating all brushes until I found the specific brush that was causing it. Finally, I found it. Ironically, hardwood was being defeated by this single piece of wood, this bastard plank, this timber monster, this specific beam of doom appeared to not only be the bane of myself and mappers involved in this creation, but also Valve themselves, possibly even delaying the summer update at this point in the process. So we found it, the problematic single brush in the map breaking everything. So now what? First, I closed the map out and opened up my saved base version and created a third copy to try to find the easiest solution to pass on to the mapper, who could then pass it on to Valve. When I loaded up the map, I quickly realized I had no idea on the map where that brush even was. 
Being tired and unfamiliar with the project and my haste to jump into the solution, I realized I'd never actually gotten my bearings in the map to know where that specific wooden wall even was. <laughs> Yeah, that was dumb. So after about five minutes of searching around the map in shame, I finally stumbled on my plus one post of darkness and could figure out how best to fix it. First, for a sanity check, I compiled the map as is. Ha! <laughs> Remember the no draw displacement error? Remember back then, when times were so much simpler? When we were bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, ready to tackle what seemed like a simple error approximately two million compiles ago? When we still had the will to- oh hey, there's our nanner. Okay, so we're back to square one at least. First, I tried cutting the funk detail grouping out of the map, and then using PASTE SPECIAL, I put it back exactly where it was. This method sometimes refreshes brushes as a brand new one, sort of like turning it off and on again, and can fix some weird issues. But on compile, our dreaded nan error. Next, I tried grabbing the funk detail grouping and turning it into a world brush as an experiment. Compiling, I was honestly surprised that the nan error was no longer there. Okay. So it fixes it if it's not a funk detail, but that wouldn't be a very good solution because as a world brush, it would unnecessarily cut a whole bunch of extra viz leaves, so that just doesn't work out well for us. I reverted my changes and did another sanity check compile just in case and nan error as expected. I noticed the beam was sort of at an odd angle and we all know the engine prefers things on grid more than off. So I thought maybe if I straightened it out and got it back realigned, it could possibly be our fix. On compile, no error. Okay, so it seems like that angle was causing it. This wasn't a bad fix, but ideally we would keep the brush in the same place as the mapper intended. Reverting it back again, I decided to see how little I could churn the brush, keeping the look and functionality with minimal disruptions to the map itself around this area. I grabbed it and twisted it ever so slightly, compiled, and no way, no error. <sighs> to do just one more sanity check, I started from scratch one more time with the base unaltered map. Sanity compile, nan error, of course. I went to the brush, this time actually knowing where it was right away, grabbed it, replicated my teeny tiny little twist, compiled again, and no nan error. All of this time and energy with such a simple fix. So I copied that rotated funk detail, opened a brand new VMF, used paste special to drop it in exactly where it will go in the mapper's VMF file, saved it as solution to a dumb problem dot VMF, and sent it over to the mapper with the instructions to delete the old one, drop it into their map using paste special, and adjust any clip brushes that slight change around it might break. <laughs> so to break things down a bit, it seems that our problem was this one brush happened to be rotated at this exact angle in this exact place while funk detailed, but only when compiled on Intel CPUs. What the hell, Source Engine? I mean, seriously, why? Why? What is wrong with you? Why are you like this? Seriously, I would love if someone could tell me what could cause this, but I don't think anyone can because it's so freaking obscure and hard to replicate in the first place. My only running theory is that the angle of the brush caused some sort of mystical math rounding error voodoo that I'm not smart enough to understand. One of the other possible hints that I was told by the mapper Squishy in later testing is that it also seemed to be fixed when moving the brush away from the adjacent wall next to it, possibly pointing to the error being caused by an intersection of brushes at that specific angle and location. But that said, I may not know why it was breaking, but I can figure out what was causing it to break and how to fix it, and in the end, that's all that matters. So that, children, is a story about how Papa Crash saved the 2023 summer update. You're welcome. If you appreciate me grinding my brain against the flying source engine spaghetti monster for about four hours, which maybe saved an update that I may have also possibly helped cause with that open letter project, and want to show me some love, check out my Patreon like Agent Maxwell and all these other cool kids on the screen have already done. Or throw me a few bones via my Kofi. Anything is greatly appreciated and helps me justify doing more stupid stuff like this with my life in the future.